Good afternoon and welcome to Noonday Prayer for Wednesday, February 2nd, 2022, or 2 to 2022. And uh, what a nice number that is for the day. Today is also the Feast of Candlemas or the Presentation. And, uh, and it's also Groundhog Day. So uh, welcome to Noonday, Noonday Prayer, which starts on page 103 in the Book of Common Prayer. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Psalm 119. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. I have sworn and am determined to keep your righteous judgments. And deeply troubled, preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing tribute of my lips and teach me your judgments. My life is always in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have set a trap for me, but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. Truly, they are the joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fulfill your statutes forever and to the end. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Luke chapter 2, verse 22, to continue with the theme, through 40. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Jesus' parents brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord a pair of turtle doves, or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, Anna the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84, she never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer, night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Thanks be to God. Today we uh, 
have multiple celebrations, and the, today is the feast of the presentation of the child Jesus in the temple, who is a light to enlighten the nations. And, and so it is we have on this day where Simeon speaks of Jesus as a light to enlighten the nations. We have the Feast of Candlemas, and candles represent for us the Christ, uh, who is a light to enlighten the nations and to enlighten our own lives to teach us a way of gentleness and compassion, care for one another and ourselves, and to teach us a way of truth and justice and love, and to call us into that life as a deeper vision for ourselves. That light persists, and so today it's very common that we bless candles on this day, and so we'll, we'll conclude with a blessing. You can hold a candle up or light a candle today and gather up the candles in your house, and you can have a blessing at the end of this service. And so today is Candlemas, or a light to enlighten the nations in the middle of Epiphany and the presentation of Jesus in the temple. Uh, as uh, one of our parishioners wrote so eloquently about this day that candles and Candlemas uh, are a sign of Jesus' presence, and especially because candles in giving off light also give up of themselves. It's it's of substantial cost to the candle to give light to us. And so it is that giving up of self uh, for the sake of others that's at the center of our gospel. Uh, let this mind be in us who was in me, who was a servant, that we might be free. That pattern of servanthood, of giving over of, of the creation, of giving over of God's self for us, of God's Son, of giving over the sunlight for both the plants, of plants for our food, of animals for our food, for, for the whole planet to give itself over in the center of peace of the, of the love of God shining in the light of the world, in the world itself, is the nature of creation itself. And it's one of those deep Christian's claims that Christ is the fulfillment of that kenotic or kenosis of giving of self. And so it is we have the presentation of Jesus who will, as we hear Simeon say, be a light to the nations, a light for everyone. Uh, and, and that light uh, that comes into the world will also pierce the soul of Mary. Uh, there will be sorrow involved for Mary as well in this uh, new life offered in Christ. And it's a sacrificial life. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily mean martyrdom. Jesus took that for us. We can give and give of our life in a way that is continuing. Today is also um, uh, the feast of, uh, also it is also Groundhog Day, and, and hopefully uh, you're not in too much of a Groundhog Day as in the Bill Murray movie, um, but you're able to find yourself progressing uh, and uh, Groundhog Day is one of those cross-quarter days in our solar cycle, our journey around the sun, where the, the sun uh, moves, uh, starts to move back northward of the equator, um, and uh, it's just still south of the equator, but it's the midway point between, between uh, a winter solstice and the vernal equinox. And so this is the cross-quarter day that also goes along with um, the cross-quarter days of May Day, um, or sometimes Pentecost, um, uh, also goes along with uh, um, Beltane uh, or Lamas on August 1st, and All Hallows Eve, or All Saints Day on November 1st. Those are the cross-quarter days that we often celebrate um, in, in the Christian year, uh, signs and turning of the sun and change of the season. And so we're midway there, and apparently, Punxsutawney Phil, uh, this morning, um, did see his shadow, and as a result, we will, the theory is that we'll have six more weeks of winter, but, um, and they all kind of go together, and so it's a, it's a day of a lot of, a lot of meanings, uh, on this day, but hopefully the main meaning is, meaning is, is the, the presentation of Christ in the temple as a light to the world, uh, a light for your life, to call you to a way of gentleness, kindness, care, compassion, to center yourself on a life of, of consideration for the needs of others and a discovery of the presence of Christ in one another and in yourself.
and, and let that presentation come forward, even as it is costly um, in you and in us. It is life-giving and spreads light for the benefit and well-being of us all. Find your way to that light that's in you and it shines brightly, even in the midst of days that seem like they don't change much. Find your way back to that light and persist in letting it burn in you and identify it in others and renew it. Uh, and join with Simeon and saying, let now your servant be free as you have promised, for these eyes of mine have seen a light to enlighten the nations for the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we humbly pray that as your only begotten Son was this day presented in the temple, so we may be presented to you with pure and clean hearts by Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Just invite your prayers for all those who are suffering from COVID, all those who are ill, those who are frustrated, those who are struggling in some way. Um, we particularly pray for... Um, Scott Arnold's father in this time in the twilight of his life uh, as he's close to death. We pray for the brother of Tom Goodell, Joe, in this time. Bless him. We hold up the parents of Susan McGuire. And we pray for all those in places of healing and strengthening <clears throat> in this time. We hold up especially also Martha, the mother of David Kelly. Bless them. Bless all schools, students, teachers, administrators in this time, those in hospitals, those serving those who are in need of attention. We give thanks for the decline in cases. We give thanks for those who are serving in our hypothermia shelter this week. And we pray for our guests, uh, the vulnerability they face in everyday life, not having a home in this time in their life. Bless us in our continued care and our seeking uh, environments of support for each other in every good way. For families and Afghan families who are still yet in extended stay hotels uh, or who are living in camps, uh, bless them. For those who have sponsors, strengthen them and help them to find a new home here in this country. We give thanks for the new sunlight coming forward and the warmth of the days that are warmer this week than last for all that is good in our life. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds strong in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love and pray for now and always. And the blessing of God be upon this light that the candles shed and the candles in our homes, that they may be signs for us of the presence of Christ in our own lives and the lives of others. Amen. <clears throat>